the day back with episode 11 of season 3 please we've got another uk gem for you today walk in the park was released by gigs um, on the 4th of august 2008 independently through s1 but the records um it, it is gigs first um, commercial release at the Pit Night collection of mixtapes from 2005 and onwards. So the album includes guest appearances from SN1 members Joe Grind, Gunner, Kaiser, and Gunner D, um, amongst others. Um, the production was hand, hand, handled in house um, production from Boom Productions, um, Bios Music, and others. So Walk in the Park um, it incorporates British hip hop with road rap and gangster rap alongside progressive flows and production. Um, the album entered the UK, um, UK UK chart at number 13 and number 9 UK independence chart selling a thousand of independent um, press copies um, uh, and selling that in music stores. Walking the Park was positively received by music critics. Um, since its release, Walking the Park has been recognised as the influence release for British hip hop um, music, spawning the subgenre of road rap, while introducing slower and flows that, can, that constructed the fast paced grand flows that were significantly popular at the time. So, yeah, the um, thing about this album, this is one of my favourite albums, is that I can say this was like the forefront for that that chain and style because before that, before that, it was grime that was dominating. Obviously, grime is art in the UK. You know, and it's more faster. That 100, that 140, 120 BPM is quick, and the rapping is, is quick and fast. But when Giz came and walking the park, with hip hop, UK hip hop, not Grammy, with UK hip hop. When he came back now, when he came, came with a different sound. Ah, oh, sound different now. I know, even though in UK, obviously hip hop is American, but you we have our own, still have our own UK hip hop over here, but. Grab at the time with Dominic, which is art. So when Giz came with, 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 when, Giz, when Giz came out, Walk in the Park, he was UK um, road rap. He was more slower. He wasn't as fast, but it was slower, more darker as well. And obviously, it was road rap. We're talking about streets as well, mixing it with hardcore, and obviously, obviously the production as well. So it, it, that was a change in the, in the music industry in the UK, in the hip hop, in the urban, um, the urban world in the UK. Um, so yeah, that was a big change, man. And the Walking Past one of my favorite albums as well. Um, the album was recorded in 2008, and it was released on 4th of August 2008. Um, the album was recorded at Unit 10 Studios in London, England. Um, the album is 70 minutes long and 18 seconds. So I'm gonna go more in the background of the album as well. Um, in 2007, Gigs released a song called Montauk. Um, leading to increased buzz for gigs and his music. This followed up by one of the baddest UK tracks, what was actually American with beat, the beat produced by Dr. Dre, and the song originally from Star Quo, but kicks free style of this beat. There's a video for this one, well, this went mad in 2007. The whole club everywhere, the streets of London were banging this out left, right, and I remember when I was 16 at the time, I think we finished around finishing school and this was a bang at the time. Um, and so he released Talking the Hardest, a freestyle, um, and had a music video for it as well. And it was a very underground success and became a British rap cult classic. However, now the songs were included in the track list and the album, according to the gig, All in the Park was recorded and complete within two weeks. Um, the album was so that's within two weeks, wow. Kids weren't playing about a boy. Um, they, the gigs released a video for the song Um for, for promoting before the album was released. However, Empty Babe refused to play the video due to claim that because it was too strong for their channel. Um, the radio channels also banned gigs music from airplay. In response to bands, gigs restricted his video application and wrote the tune The Lost Straw directed towards the bad treatment he received from um, Empty Babe and BBC Radio Extra at the time. When he asked about his issue, he said he was asked to censor drugs reference from the song despite none being 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 made. DJ such as Tim Westwood are known to hold this album in high regard despite gig being blacklisted from the BBC Extra. The underground success of the album led to gigs signing to EXO um, recordings and the release of his sophomore album Let Him Have It in fact in 2010. Yeah so I want to go back to gigs being banned here. Yeah, at the time gigs was, I remember this man, the kids, oh, kids weren't getting a lot of shows, he was getting black listed, blackboard, you know, he wasn't getting shows because 
in their eyes it has incited violence and all that but they don't he just it's typical man when, when a young black person from the hood or trying to make it and this is what they're trying to live off and this is this is the experience and you're trying to blacklist them because it's some more something like right no it's telling his story and how he grew up you, you don't understand and that's why you're doing that people would have to do stuff like that when they don't understand you know so it, it was hard at the time but you know he thinks has come a long way. He's before he's performing now a bit on the biggest stages, you know. They tried to ruin him but they couldn't. You know what I mean? You gotta stay strong in these situations and he takes proof that he can. And that's how it was at the time. A lot of artists real artists were getting banned from performing in shows and all their music videos were getting blocked and all that and getting taken down. It's just ridiculous man. But yeah. Anyways, um so um, the album track is for the album, there's 18 tracks all, all together for this album. Um, so, for the intro, um, that's produced by Boom Production. You've got two um, that are produced by Weebiza. You've got three open up, produced by your music. Four, Who Are You to Judge, Reach and Joe Grind, Boom Productions. Number five, More Maniacs, featuring T Boost um, and Young Spray, Boom Productions. Six, Swagger, featuring Joe Grind, Boom Productions, again on production. Seven, Cut It Up Bag. I mean, sorry, cut out the bag. Um, produced by um, Boss Entertainment. Eight saw. Produced by Boom Productions. Number nine, make it look good. Featuring Joe Mello. Produced by Boom Productions again. Number click clack. Featuring Killer. Ki and Shocks. Universe. Produced that beat. Uh, number eleven, pinch and all the time. Featuring Dubs and Charles Lauren. Produced by Floop, Floop, Floops. Um, number twelve, Ratatat. Featuring Kai's. Um, produced by um, Simple, number 13, Temp and Temp are featuring TG, produced by Bayok Music, number 14, Bring a, mas a, a Message Back, produced by Boom Productions, 15, You Raised Me, produced by Boom Productions, 16, Walk in the Park, featuring OTB, Boom Productions, Let Me Have It, featuring D Boost, produced by Foops, um, number 18, Family, Test Out the Nine, Remix, featuring SN1, Boom Productions. Peak Petition was 143 on the UK album chart, the UK Independence album chart, the peak number 9, and the UK r beat album chart, the number 13 as well. So it was more successful in the underground scene, there's more of an underground scene album, but it peaked and did well. One of my favourite songs in this album is You Raise Me as well. The street read. It's one of my favourite songs, I like that song, you know. It rhymes with Tupac Day Mamma as well. One of the great songs, man, I like that song. Yeah, this album is one of my favourite albums of all time. Let me know if it's one of your favourite albums of all time, you know. Why is it your one of your favorite? Let us me know. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. And yeah, man, thank you for watching. That's it for today. I'm just recording. I'll be back again for the next episode soon. Yeah. Peace. I'm out.